guys welcome to creatively homemade my name is Jennifer and I love to share fun and creative paper crafting projects so today is memory keeping Monday and I have a different sort of project for you I think part of the fun of holiday traditions is all the yummy recipes you make with your family cookies and desserts and all those special Christmas treats. So today I am going to show you how to take a plain craft 6x8 binder and cover it so that you can use it for a Christmas recipe book. And then I'm also going to show you a few um, different ideas for making cards or scrapbook pages to put in your book. So let's get started and I will show you how easy it is to put this together. Okay, we're going to start by decorating the cover. This is a 6x8 craft album. Um, mine has an early, exp early espresso spine. Um, the ones that are available in the current uh, Stampin' Up! catalog have a black spine, I believe. Um, but then it has a nice little book plate on the end there so you can label it. Now I went ahead and covered the back um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. You can use any Christmas print paper you'd like. Since this is going to be a Christmas recipe book, I thought these cute little gingerbread men uh, were cute and adorable and perfect for that. So I got this paper at Hobby Lobby. It came in a big huge stack of papers for like $20. I think it came with like 100 or 200 sheets. So you're going to need to start by cutting your paper. You're going to need a 12 by 12 sheet um, for the background to cover it. And then you're going to need to cut that down to 9 inches. And then, so it's 9 inches by 12 inches. Then you're going to need a coordinating color. That's going to go on the inside. And then we're also going to put a decorative strip along the front. Now this paper was in that same paper pack as the Gingerbread Men one and it talks about it's got a little script font on it and it talks about gingerbread or um the sugar plums dancing in their heads and um so i thought that was really cute and i'm that's the coordinating paper i'm going to use so you need for the inside covers you need two of these cut to six and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches and then you need a decorative strip that's going to go across the front of your album and that's nine inches by four and three quarter inches. Okay, so let's get started covering the album. Like I said, I already have the back done, but it's the same principle for the front and the back. We're just gonna add a little bit of extra decorating on the front. So you need a strong adhesive to make sure that this paper does not pull away. You know, you're going to be using this frequently during the holiday season, so you wanna make sure that you use something's a little bit stronger. This is Fast Fuse, that's what I'm using because I don't often like to mess with liquid glue. However, you could also use Tombow if that's what you prefer. So I am just going to add adhesive all the way around on this craft uh, part on the cover. Okay. Another benefit of using Fast Fuse over the Tombow is that um, the Tombow might make the paper buckle some of the thinner pattern paper. When it gets wet, it might buckle a little bit, and you won't have that issue with the Fast Fuse. Okay, so you want to take your 12 by 9 inch piece of paper and center it on the cover and you want to just push that paper right up to this edge this bound edge here and then press it down so you've got a good seal then we want to turn that over grab some scissors we're going to be cutting some flaps here you're going to want to make a flap so you're going to cut it an angle up to this corner and then turn it and then you're going to cut in from here and that's going to just cut out this little edge that's going to make it fold nicer and give you a nicer finish on the inside of your book so then repeat that for the other side okay. 
okay? Now go ahead and we're gonna work with these top and bottom flaps first. So fold that up. You wanna go ahead and have a crease before you add any adhesive to it. And then just add fast fuse around the edges. And then fold that up and press it to secure it. Then you want to repeat the process for the top flap. Just crease it and fold it. Then add your adhesive. Okay, fold that over and press it to make sure it's completely stuck down. And then we're going to do the side flap. Okay. and fold that in. Okay, so now with the back page, or the back cover, this is all you need to do, and you can go ahead and adhere that inside cover piece down. However, with the front, I wanna put a little strip down the middle, so I'm gonna do that before I put the inside cover in. So this is the piece that I'm using for that center strip, so I just wanna add fast fuse adhesive all over the back of that. Okay. Now mine has a script print on it, so make sure that is facing the correct direction. You don't want to put that on an upside down. And then run that up to that binding about in the center of the page. Flip it over and press it to adhere it on the inside. Okay, so now we've got that added. We are ready to go ahead and put our cover on. You're going to add fast fuse all over the back of this and then push it right up to that binding. Got a limited amount of space here on my desk. Okay. Again, make sure if you're using a print with script on it, make sure it's facing the correct direction. And then just kind of center it top to bottom and then push it up to that binding and press it to seal. Okay, so I've got a few things out that I'm going to use to decorate my cover. Of course, you can be as ornate as you'd like. I wanna keep this fairly simple because I'm going to be actually using this year in, year out at Christmas. So I printed um, Favorite Christmas and cut that out with the layering ovals die set, the biggest uh, scalloped oval. I made a little gingerbread man using the Sizzix gingerbread man die. And I'm gonna put him over in the corner. And then I just cut out letters that spell out recipe and ran them through my Xyron Create a Sticker. Anytime I have um, small shapes like letters or tiny little things that I don't want to mess with gluing down, I will use my Create a Sticker. Makes it much easier. So I'm just going to lay this out and see how I want it. Now one tip with when you're using um, letters and you want to line them up nicely, I recommend putting them on the edge of the create a sticker or you could use wax paper or something like that. Something that it will release those sticker letters. But just use it to line it up. So I'm just putting recipes, spelling out recipes along the edge of that sticker paper. It's got getting the spacing how I want it.
Okay, just like that. Get that little S in place. The P popped off. Okay. And when it looks good to you, you can lay that down on your finished product project and put it exactly where you want it and make sure it's centered and then press it in place and then pull that wax paper away and then it'll be perfectly lined up for you. So then I'm just going to add this favorite Christmas right above it. Again, I'm using Fast Fuse because I want to make sure that this stays stuck down permanently. And then I'm going to add my cute little gingerbread man. Now the, um, the little trim on his hands and legs, came. that's part of the die, so you can cut those. But then I just used little white sequins for his buttons and drew on a little face there. So I'm going to add some Fast Fuse to the back of him as well. Okay, and add him to my cover. One last thing you can do to decorate the cover of your Christmas recipe book is to run some ribbon to hide that seam. So I've cut a 30 inch length of Crumb Cake Classic Weave Ribbon. You want to open the book to the inside and run Fast Fuse Adhesive all along that seam. Just like that. And then keeping an even length on both sides, place the ribbon over that seam and press it to okay, seal after it. After you've given that ribbon a good press to make sure it's stuck down, open the book back to the front. And you're going to want to add a little bit of fast fuse at the top and at the bottom just to kind of hold it in place. You don't need to run it down the whole length of the front. Then press that ribbon into the fast fuse. Okay, and then we're going to tie a knot right up here at the top above this um, designer series paper strip with our gingerbread man. And the ribbon kind of twists there, so that's why we don't want to run that fast fuse all the way up. Okay, so we have a nice little knot there, and I'm going to grab my scissors and just trim it into, trim it to maybe two inches on the tails. And that just adds a nice little bit of accent to the front cover to separate the binding and the decorations. Okay, so for adding your recipes to the book, you have a couple of different options from simple to more elaborate. So I'm going to show you the easiest one first. Um, this 6x8 album has different configurations of page protectors. For the recipe book, if you want to keep things simple, just use the 2 4x6 page protector. So I've printed my hot cocoa recipe up on a 4x6 card, and I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping to it. So what's more appropriate for hot cocoa than this cute hug in a mug stamp set? So I'm going to make a little border along the bottom with this chocolate chip stamp. And I'm going to do that with chocolate chip ink. Um, this recipe actually um, gets its chocolate flavor in the hot cocoa from chocolate chips, so I thought that was appropriate. So I'm just inking up this little chocolate chip stamp, and I'm going to stamp that all along the bottom and make a cute little border. Just like that. By the way, if you're looking for a yummy hot cocoa recipe for uh, Christmas Eve, look up the Crock-Pot hot cocoa recipe that uses sweetened condensed milk and chocolate chips. It's amazing. Okay, so I added my little border there. So now I want to stamp a little mug of hot chocolate right there. And I'm going to use the mug and the little insert 
and the candy cane and the little whipped cream topping. So I've pulled out an assortment of ink. I've got black, uh, crumb cake, real red, and smoky slate. So I'm going to start by stamping the cup. Just doing that in black. I'm going to stamp that right to the side of the ingredients. Making sure that I leave a little bit of space for the whipped cream at the top. So next I want to stamp my whipped cream using Smoky Slate. And I'm just going to do that right at the top of the mug there. Okay. Next I'm going to add the little candy cane to the side of the whipped cream because we always put candy canes in our hot chocolate. So I'm just going to put it to the side just like that. And then the last thing I want to do is use um, crumb cake to make it look like there's hot cocoa in that mug. So I'm using the solid um, shape that matches that cup, making sure to ink that up really well. And then I'm just stamping that right inside that mug. Just like so, so here is that finished recipe card. Now if you want to add even more decoration to it, you could cut it a little bit smaller and mount it on a piece of 4x6 pattern paper. Now here is another one that I made and this one I just put a little border along the bottom that was stamped and I put a little mitten die cut. So this is certainly a fun and cute way to preserve all your recipes and it's fairly easy to put together, but you may want to step it up a bit and include some photos. So you can include photos in these page protectors as well. So I'll show you one of those that I'm making. I printed up a photo for my English toffee recipe. This is the same photo I used on my blog when I shared this recipe. I printed the recipe itself, the ingredients and the directions, and then cut out two four by six pieces of pattern paper. So I'm just going to mount the photo on this little candy background paper using snail adhesive. Leave an even border all along the sides. So that's going to go in my top slot here. Just like that. And then I'm going to mount the recipe onto this other piece of paper. leave that even border and then there's a big blank space here so I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping since I have a snowflake up here in the photo that I used on my blog I'm just going to stamp a little snowflake right here on the blank space just like that and this uh, snowflake is from the Flurry of Wishes stamp set. Such a pretty one to have. And then I'm just going to add that to the page protector. So that's another way that you can preserve your recipes and include photos. Now if you want to be a little bit more creative with your Christmas recipe book, you can make scrapbook style pages. And you'll just want to use a regular 6x8 page protector for that. So I've cut a piece of paper, pattern paper, to 6 inches by 8 inches, and I've already got the letters cut out and mounted for reindeer chow. This recipe is for candy cane muddy buddies, but my kids like to call it reindeer chow. So I printed up a picture of the recipe. I made a little candy cane embellishment that's just a die cut that I've paper pieced together. I cut a 1 inch by 8 inch strip of contrasting paper that's going to run down the edge and then I printed up the ingredients and the instructions for the recipe. So let's get started and I'll show you how to put that together. I'm going to add some adhesive to the back of this 1 inch by 8 inch strip of contrasting paper. 
I'm just going to use snail adhesive to do that. And just run it down the right side. The next thing we want to do is put our instructions down at the very bottom. As I mentioned, I've already got that mounted on green cardstock, so it'll stand out a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of center that on the bottom. Next, I am going to put the picture of the Candy Cane Muddy Buddies right above that. Then I'm going to add the little candy cane embellishment over there in the corner. And then the last thing I want to do is add the ingredients right up there at the top. I'm trying to decide if I want that straight or at an angle. I think I'm going to go at an angle and I'm going to move that picture over just a little bit. So I'm going to very carefully lift that up. I'm going to slide that underneath the candy cane so it's overlapping a little bit. And then I'm going to put the ingredients up there at the top. And overlap the photo just a little bit. So that was a quick and easy scrapbook page that highlights the recipe. So here is the finished Christmas recipe book. I just love how it turned out and I can't wait to make more pages for it to document our favorite family recipes. So here are those three styles of pages I made again. The um, plain recipe with just some stamping, the photo and the recipe, and a little scrapbook page. So if you need the binder or page protectors to make one of these Christmas recipe books, this craft binder that's uncovered, you can check out the description box below this video. I have links down there to where you can purchase those from Stampin' Up. I am a Stampin' Up demonstrator, so anytime you purchase through those links, it goes to help support my family, and I thank you. If you ever have any questions or comments or I can help you in any way, please let me know. I am always happy to help, and I would welcome the chance to earn your business. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this has inspired you to create a Christmas recipe book of your own. If you would like to see more videos like this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Holidays. Bye.